Palm Sunday celebration. Um, I'd like to offer thanks to Barb Fry and to Dale Clary and to Matthew Andrade, who is going to be recording for us. We thank you for all, all for joining us. Um, today I'd like to ask special prayers for Wendy Keelich's family who passed away this past week. Wendy is uh, the aunt to Dale Clary. So please keep them in your prayers. Also, a prayer of thanksgiving for Mike Hendrickson, who um, has had open heart surgery and is now recovering at home. Please keep in your prayers all of those people who are suffering from this virus, but also the families of those who have survived now and are healing. We pray that you will be with um, all of your own family and all of those that you can't be with. We'll keep them in our prayers as well. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service this morning begins with the Gospel of Luke, the 19th chapter, verses 28 to 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the coat, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people came spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds and powers that they had seen saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Here ends the Gospel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our hymn is all glory, Lord, and honor. Oh, yeah. 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the co contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first lesson, Isaiah 50, chapters 4 through 9. The first lesson is from the 50th chapter of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The, the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insulting and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have not set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly the psalm. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. And when they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the proud. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. 
My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. May your face shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. The second lesson is from the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So that, at the, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And their voices prevailed. 
So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, whom they had asked for. But Jesus he delivered up to their will. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and laid on him the cross to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed a great multitude of the people, and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never gave suck. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And then they came to the place which is called the skull. There they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching, but the rules scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying in a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the Roman centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly, this man was the Son of God. And all the multitudes who assembled to see the sight, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his, all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance and saw these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. And now, O Lord, let the words of my mouth and let the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. Dear God, you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's Palm Sunday, and today we begin a journey. And a journey is more than a little trip. A journey requires planning. A journey requires patience. A journey requires that you have some sense of where you're going, some sense of when you're going to get there in some sense of what you're going to meet at the end. Many years ago, when I was a youngster, maybe 11 or 12, our family took a journey. 
We got into our old Ford station wagon in Nebraska and headed west to California. Oh, the beginning of the journey was wonderful and we sang praises to my dad who planned the trip. We were so excited. We are going to California. We are going to Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. What fun it was to load up the car, to get everything ready. As we got in the car, we thought about all the songs we would sing and the games we would play along the way. And we were just thrilled. And we thought Pop was the greatest man on earth because he's taking us to the happiest place in the world. And my mom sat quietly, as though she knew that there was more to this journey than what was going on when we first got in the car. So the longer we rode, the wearier we got, the hungrier we got, the snacks that had been eaten up too soon, the bathrooms were too far away from each other. Oh, and some of us started feeling a little car sick too. At the end, the happiest place in the world was still there. But now the journey wasn't that much fun anymore. And so we traveled on. And then we hit the desert. And the car was not air conditioned. And it was really hot. And some of us began to whine a little bit. Can we just please stop and get out for a while? We're sick of the car. We don't want to sleep in the station wagon anymore. Pop said, do you want to turn around and go home? No. And so we traveled on. And still at the end of the journey, it was the happiest place in the world. But now we began to doubt if we'd ever get there. I mean, why would you cross a desert to get to some place of joy? We eventually got there. It was everything we thought it would be. We were noisy, crazy, excited children. Parents didn't look so happy. But we, we were there. We saw Nikki. We got ears. And we looked back at the journey and said it was so worth it. Palm Sunday starts us on our journey too. And we start off excited and we're waving our palms and we're saying, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, but as we go along, the journey begins to get tedious. We get to Monday Thursday and we do the communion, that last meal that Jesus is going to experience with his friends. The tears and the anguish in the garden as he's praying to his father, but agreeing to do his will, to stay the course. And his father, who is driving this journey for Jesus, knows that at the end, for all humanity, there is the happiest place in the world. And so he encourages his son to move forward. And we're allowed to sit in the back seat and ride along. And we know that it's tedious. And this year it's more tedious than most years because this year we can't even travel together. And so we go into Holy Week all the way to Galgotha. Together we ride, along with Jesus, unable to control his journey, only going along as witnesses, feeling his exhaustion, feeling our own despair, waiting the long three days because that's how long it takes. But keep in mind that Palm 
Sunday is when we get in the car to take this journey. And at the end of the journey, we are promised the happiest place in the world with Jesus, with God who has driven the car. Stay the course as hard as it is. We will be alone together this year. But Jesus will be with us. And keep in mind that at the journey's end, salvation waits for us. The happiest place in the world. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is the old rugged cross. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
with all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, especially today, we pray for Dale's family. Let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Hear us, O God. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we command them to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.